And good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Wake Up Missoula. It's September 10th. We're getting into the school year. We're right in the thick of it. Hope you guys had a good Labor Day weekend. I did absolutely nothing Labor Day weekend, and I enjoyed every second of it. So let's jump right in. The biggest news that are happening just over last night, yesterday, the Queen of England has died. Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II will retire the only way monarchs have retired in the past, her death. And with her passing comes a period of sorrow for our neighbors across the pond and in the true north as her reign was of dignity and bolstering ties with other countries while dismantling the status quo of the England Empire. From February 1952 until her death, September 2022, she was queen for 70 years, making her the longest reigning monarch ever. The future is uncertain, however. King Charles will move on to becoming the King of England in rules of secession. He is in his 70s, and so yeah, we're going to see how it turns out. He's been kind of uh, leaning more towards uh, uh, the natural world, and he's always kind of uh, been obsessed with gardening and a lot of that stuff. So he may move into a Green New Deal moving forward with his country. But at the, the only thing that is certain right now is that he will be moving into the monarchy as the King of England. So they're going to probably recall all the money, put his face in all the, uh, uh, all the pound uh, paper money, and then we'll just see how it goes from there. So one of the big things that are happening, um, of course, I've already mentioned this before, Pakistan, if you don't already know, Pakistan is one third underwater with floods ruining farmlands and homes alike. In a BBC report, uh, Mankar Lake in a Sindh province is dangerously full after record monsoons that in inu inundated a third of Pakistan. Three branches of the lakes bank so far to to protect nearby uh, areas nearby have displaced over a hundred thousand people uh, that's out of 400 villages affected by this flooding basically imagine if the clark fork river flooded and we all had to leave missoula that's the scope of this in this region alone floods in package have affected some 33 million people and killed at least 1300 1,300 people, including 458 children. And this is just from earlier this week. As people are dealing with the damage, the long-term effects range from billions of dollars worth of damage, not to mention the food crisis. And they were already going through uh, higher inflation and higher food costs to begin with. 78,000 square kilometers of crops cultivated across 57 districts are now underwater. 68% of the country's food basket, particularly crops like rice, cotton, wheat, and onion, have been washed away. That doesn't also account that uh, 80 to a night, about 90% of crops have been damaged or affected by the flooding. So they're gonna be going into a lot of food insecurity going into the season, but this is what happens when um, with climate change, and not to mention they had three months of just solid rain. And they had the, they dealt with this back in the 70s as well with major flooding. But yeah, I don't really think of like Middle Eastern countries as having too much precipitation just in general. But when they do, they really had it this time around. So which the, you know, uh, Afghanistan is also dealing with uh, this fallout as well because they depended on a lot of the trade route with Pakistan to get their food because Pakistan is one of the many few countries that actually have somewhat close ties with Afghanistan besides Iran. And um, in recent news in Afghanistan, they also had a recent uptick, uh, uptick in suicide attacks from the last day or so. Taliban members attacked the Russian embassy in Kabul, the capital city of Afghanistan. While the U.S. has left, Iran, Pakistan, and Russia have a presence there through embassies, Russia being the previous liberators, and I mean that in quotes, before the U.S. moved in, one can easily say that they're not welcome. Russia does not have diplomatic ties. Uh, wait, 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 hold on. It's interesting uh, because they don't necessarily have uh, diplomatic ties with Russia, but the Kremlin does rec does not recognize the Taliban's run country. So though it's weird because they have an embassy there, and yet they don't recognize um, the, the Taliban run Afghanistan as an actual legitimate government. So that's just kind of an interesting kind of uh, back and forth what's going on over there as well. If they want to basically keep an embassy there, they might have to change their wording moving forward. So there's just a lot of um, upheaval there. There's always a lot of news coming out of Afghanistan, and it's all just dire. So we're going to jump right into uh, some of the things that are happening in Montana. And one of the more significant things happening is Virginia City is getting an uptick and getting some uh, money put into uh, one of their old... Uh, 
uh, centers, uh, the Stonewall Hall, the, which is basically part of Montana's heritage and basically becoming the statehood. Virginia City is pretty much the, uh, when it was the Montana Territory's capital city. Uh, then a lot of wheeling and dealing went around behind the scenes. Marcus Daly wanted to have the state of Montana's capital be in Anaconda, close to Butte Mining Company, where he was the Copper King. But then in the end, it turned out that, uh, you know, through all the wheeling, dealing, and everything else going on there with politicians as well, they ended up moving it to Helena as the official capital of the state of Montana. But of course, you know, Marcus Daly did have the last laugh by donating a copper tin roof for the capital city. So if you ever go to the capital city of Helena and you see the copper roof, that's basically Marcus's, Marcus uh, Daly's uh, big uh, statement saying that, I own you. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of history behind that. It's kind of interesting how like, I, I love reading about a lot of the history of that. But um, so let's talk about what's happening in Virginia City. Uh, the powers that be uh, that still in Virginia want to restore an old building with historic significance uh, to the state of Montana built in 1864, Stonewall, uh, Stonewall Hall served as the territory capital from 1865 to 1875. And it's now the top priority for Montana Heritage Commission and the Montana History Foundation in the race to stabilize and save the most important important structure from the territorial era. Through private slash public donations, they raised $1 million to create a convention center for those two, that two-story building. Virginia City has restored it and have kept many of the buildings and have uh, one of my favorite uh, Virginia City players that happens there. It's always a fun uh, time for a lot of people who want to go down there and enjoy some shows. Summer season is a great time for Virginia City and they do some reenactments as well. So um, I, haven't, I haven't heard so much recently because, you know, with the pandemic and everyone just kind of like uh, going down and just kind of hunkering down. I don't know if they were really doing too much lately so I'm not that well informed on that one so the building is planned to be completed by 2024 stone uh, stone hall all right so actually we have a lot of information going on forward actually we're going to uh, actually transition into my city council because this is very much newsworthy within my show so I'm going to kick things off with uh, basically a city council report the mayorship of Missoula has had a series of interviews with prospective candidates ranging from college age to seasoned 70 plus year olds um, with the two city council members running for the slot Mike Nugent and Jordan Hess the pool includes six people from Patrick Weaselhead, Tegan Avery, Jacob Elder and Fred Rice they will make their final decision on Monday September 12th and will be sworn in by the 14th the state of Montana law uh, requires that the mayorship be appointed within 30 days and so they are the city of Missoula has their hands tied and are fulfilling that order. And so we're going to jump right into those interviews right now. So kicking things off, we have Jacob Elder. So we're going to go in an order from the first interview to the last interview. So Jacob Elder, um, I have a quote from each of them. I'm just going to kind of show you guys uh, just each of their uh, responses to various questions throughout there. And so you get a, get a beat on who these people are trying to become the leader of your city of Missoula. So kicking things off with Jacob Elder. This job isn't about our own individual ends. Uh, by no means are we here to enrich ourselves. Are we here to, to perpetuate the status quo? Or are we here to, to, to put our first, our, our citizens second? So with, with that being said, and our employees, uh, again, we cannot, my vision for Missoula, I cannot bring that forth without the help of all of you, uh, city council members and, and other actors. So with that being said, Okay, give it a second. Said, uh, we will work from the understanding of, 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 of a nonpartisan approach. Uh, we have our differences. From where I come from, Liberia, because of our differences, the country was shredded in, uh, to ruins. I've seen people divided. I've seen a, a broken down society with no law and order. I've seen a select few prosper and stay there. And the rest of the folks never have a chance to, to leave there. They don't have the last names. So our differences are trivial. It, it is really trivial. In the past, I, I've, I've pushed some differences that I've learned from, uh, from that first election as a novice politician. I've learned some things to, to be more cognizant of, but also be more sensitive to. And All right, I, so that was Jacob Elder uh, saying uh, his piece during uh, those interviews. And we're going to jump right into our first uh, city council candidate who's running uh, for the slot, and this is uh, Jordan Hess out of Ward 2. I've been training for this job, albeit unknowingly, I've been training for this job for nine years. Um, I was at the table when we acquired our, our water system from a hostile multinational corporation. I was at the table when we put an open space bond on the ballot and got it and got it approved by the voters. 
I was at the table when we established the city's first housing office. I mean, I'm sorry, the state's first housing office, the state's first housing policy, and the state's first affordable housing trust fund. I was at the table with Mayor Engen for all of those actions and so many more, and I have um, the qualifications as a result of that work to step into this role. Um, I learned that ability to build coalitions through that work. Um, that's what we did with with all of these projects, with the build grant, um, with um, with the housing trust fund. We built coalitions in order to get work done. Um, I have the ability to build coalitions. I have the ability to um, to bring along people with diverse views, and I have the ability to get things done. All right. So that was uh, Jordan Hess talking his piece on becoming the mayor of Missoula, and here is Fred Rice, uh, one uh, a seasoned uh, veteran of city council. Who's uh, yeah? I'm going to let him speak for himself. I really, I, I really think that you, you know, I, there's not going to be any secrets about what I believe. But I'm not going to be, in, I'm not going to be pounding away at people to, you know, support particular candidates or uh, positions or what have you. That's just not appropriate, and in in the workplace. And again, I, uh, the HR experience basically pushes me to that conclusion if I wasn't there already. So, uh, so my focus would be and will be. Um, what's best for the city and what and try to figure out what's going to work for every everyone or if not everyone as many people as we can uh, you know I'm a utilitarian too you know greatest good for the greatest number okay Thanks. and so that was uh, Fred talking about how he would run the city of Missoula we now move on to Tegan Avery talking about what she would do for the city of Missoula yeah so housing is top of mind for me and much of the conversations about the city of Missoula. And there are many documents that the city has put forth and the Missoula Organization of Realtors has put forth. And in them, they say no neighborhood should be expected to change too much, but no neighborhood should be immune to change. And the way I think the mayor can best address the housing in Missoula while retaining Missoula's wonderful character is through intentional zoning. And I would like to work very closely with Aaron P. Han and the rest of the staff in the community development, uh, community planning development and innovation office to make sure that everything that comes before city council as far as land use and zoning is very intentional, thinks about the implications of those zoning changes, not just in the next year, but in the next 30 years, and to continue the quirky neighborhoods that Missoula have in which people of all walks of life live within blocks of each other and is a real strength of Missoula. So I want to make sure that our zoning policy is in line with how Missoula already is, which is quite a unique town with excellent recreation opportunities for everyone and that it continues to be a livable space. All right. So that was Tegan Avery talking about what her uh, goals are as mayor. So we'll jump right into another city council member, Mike Nugent, talking about his uh, role as mayor and to the future of Missoula. I think the mayor of Missoula should always be accountable to our residents, and that accountability comes from a willingness to put your name on a ballot. And I know that we're going through an appointment process right now, but I do think that there is credibility in saying, yes, I'm looking to be appointed, but I am gonna run, so I'm gonna stand by the work that I'm doing as mayor. And I think that's the way it's designed to be. Um, in leadership scenarios, when it's known that the leader is not necessarily committed to moving the mission forward long term, it becomes easy to tune out or focus on other things. The strategic priorities of Missoula do not change, and the next 14 months have too many crucial. Hold on, just give it a second. Work on for us to just focus on a placeholder. Uh, the potential of a much needed fire levy looms large. Uh, and the mayor needs to be able to stand in front of residents, organizations, rotary clubs, business groups, and help gain buy-in on why that's important. That task is difficult already, and if the mayor is not willing to put their name on the ballot next to it, I think they become an almost ineffective messenger. There's a reason that the mayor is an elected position in our charter and in state government, and I think that it's important that we keep that in mind. All right, so that was Mike Nugent um, saying what he would do as mayor and the continuation of... of support for the mayorship. Um, here is Patrick Weaselhead, the uh, sixth and last candidate. They, they drew from a hat, and so they uh, discerned the order. And here's Patrick Weaselhead, who has been on city council uh, at one point in the history. Um, so here's Patrick Weaselhead. As to Reynolds, Missoula is building almost, almost every open space 
and multiple stories of apartments which might take care of the needs. Look around the area and see how many apartment buildings are going up. Also notice that there are more or rent signs posted on apartments. Yet the Missoula character is already changing. Since I've been here in 1963, I've seen that change. We have new hotels downtown. Um, there are new roads. Uh, crazy enough, there are new turnarounds for people that get confused on how to get around them. So it's changing. Yet the downtown remains its character with places like Charlie B's, the Oxford, Press Box, the Rhino, Top Hat, the Union, and Wilma and Roxy theaters. Missoula will always be a college town with many services provided to many residents. All right. So there's Patrick Weaselhead and there's all your candidates who will be going uh, for the mayorship and will be appointed by city council as of Monday. And uh, speaking of which, they had an open for a public comment. And one of the public, uh, public comment was uh, a guy named Tyler Gernart. Um, and you might recognize him as the county clerk for the county of Missoula. And so you won't be able to see him, but if you look kind of in the bottom right hand corner, you might be able to see him just a little bit. So I'm actually getting this uh, direct feed from the city of Missoula's website. So here is Tyler. Um, Mayor Engen was somebody that I relied on quite a bit in my profession. Um, he's somebody that was always there to help. Um, and when I came to him with a problem, he usually found a solution and helped implement it. And for me, that there are so many things that I think have already been said about Mike, um, so I'm not going to rehash those. But the one thing that I think is, is probably the most important with the decision that the 12 of you face is the idea that we need somebody who provides consistency to the city. Um, having somebody who can be there, um, not just for the next 16 months, but beyond that, a leader who has a vision that they're willing to not just see through for the next 16 months, but for the next however long um, it takes to actually implement that vision is incredibly important for the city of Missoula. All right, so that's Tyler. And um, just so you guys know, uh, just a little bit of background on that as well is that he's usually the name on the uh, letter that you get from your county taxes. So he's the guy who, uh, if you want to put a name to a face, he's the guy. <laughs> yeah, he's like, it was like, oh, that's the name you want to see uh, for the tax season as we're going through the county taxes that you get twice a year. Um, if you're a property owner, that is. Um, th there you go. We have a collection of candidates looking to get that sweet mayor gig. Uh, that's my city council report and I'm sticking to it. Uh, so if you want more information about the city of Missoula, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. I know I might seem like I'm starting kind of like in the middle and later part of my show, but I just wanted to jump right in because it is pretty newsworthy to do some city council. And I might just do city council right out, uh, hot off the news just so we can get to the top things and get to, to a lot of the important things happening within the city of Missoula before I do some of the fun stuff. Uh, so ci.missoula.mt.us. You can click on meetings and it'll bring you to a nice splash page, which will have a calendar if you scroll on down to the bottom and you can click on past meetings and upcoming meetings and it'll bring up this window and you'll be able to actually click on any of these blue links right here and these blue links are a great opportunity to go into the exact point in which the part of the section starts so 10 minutes 55 seconds that's when they started the first appointments for the fill the vacancy of the mayor so you can see all sorts of things like that you can click on the public comment and it'll jump right over to the public comment section which is at the Six, uh, sixth hour and uh, 13th minute of the meeting. And just so you guys know, each of the interviews were about 50 minutes long. I suggest you guys check it out if you want to learn more about it. But like I said, the final decision will be up to the city council and you could uh, t uh, talk to your war representative and be like, hey, you know, cast your vote for this person and this is my case. So, yep, so that's kind of what's happening within the city of Missoula. And like I said, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. I have a video for you guys, and this is from our summer camps. I kind of smushed some things together, but I also wanted to uh, tell you that we're going to be... Uh, um, covering a couple of the events next week for the uh, book festival. So uh, the Montana Book Festival is going to be hosted here at the Missoula Public Library because, you know, there's books here, so they might as well. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's, it's yeah, I don't, I'm trying to be funny. All right, so yeah, the book festival is happening next week. You can learn more information by Googling it or finding out more information on the website. 
uh, Montana Book Festival, and it's usually hosted here in the city of Missoula. Sometime in the mid to late September, and MCAT will be covering that. So we uh, we might be live streaming a couple of them, but overall we'll have the uh, complete works of the uh, Montana Book Festival for 2020 up on our YouTube and more as we get the content out there for you guys. So, all right, so uh, summer camps are st or s have plenty of uh, videos and video things I've been showing off. So without further ado, here is yet another uh, uh, kid made video from our summer camps. Man, I'm bored. Want to play tag? Sure. Tag.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out. Kicking things off is a horror Airbnb, you know, Cabin in the Woods, because, you know, Airbnb horror movies are like the new Cabin in the Wood movies coming out. So let's kick things off. It's called Barbarian. Welcome to the world of horror movies based on Airbnbs being more than what they seem, because it's a horror movie. Watch a family or some hot 20-year-old pretending to be younger than they are in a movie, coasting on the success of the It's movies and ring and grudge and you know all their you know it's like anybody who's just like uh, you're a PA on uh, it chapter one right it's like yeah it was like from the makers of it chapter one comes this movie it's like I, I, I guess so I uh, guess I'll leave but what if so the whole idea of this thing is that a woman goes into this Airbnb oh there's another guy who's like well I have the Airbnb too wah wah and what something's kind of simple turns out to be a lot more horrific as it turns out because the guy is kind of a uh, trapping uh, unsuspecting uh, beautiful women in the Airbnb and then forced to reckon with uh, when the damaged female protagonist overcomes the therapies the bad guy by killing them um, instead so kicking things off I have no idea what I'm talking about yeah and I'm assuming this movie has <laughs> whatever up next we have a movie that you probably won't even see it's called medieval I'm not much of a betting man but I assume that this is about the Middle Ages which can span anywhere from 1000 AD to about 1700 AD because only when America came around is when the Middle Ages truly uh, stopped existing. So the story of 15th century uh, Czech icon and warlord Jan Ziska who defeated armies of the Teutonic Order and the Holy Roman Empire. So that's a word I recognize. If any of those are relatable then go right ahead and see this movie wherever you can find it. Uh, which is probably not here in Missoula. Ugh. Up next we have a Bollywood movie. Welcome to yet another melodrama in the form of a Bollywood film. Brahmastra is a movie about Shiva, which is the Hindu god of various things, but mostly following her journey of love in a mythical world created for her. Expect spectacles of decent 1990s CGI tech with a mix of beautiful set design and plenty of money to make an epic on the scale of Western Hollywood movies. It, you know, hey, I've seen RRR. It's ridiculous, hammy, ridiculous, and everything like that. And I think uh, Bollywood movies are getting a quite a big resurgence. Uh, this looks like, kind of like a DJ makes a goddess Shiva fall in love with him, but as the mortal finds out other gods and spirits exist, he must fight his way to get it. So it's kind of like Scott Pilgrim, but with the goddess Shiva. So anyways, um, I will not be surprised if they do a dance scene, because, you know, that's, you know, it's Bollywood tradition. But maybe the uh, shoehorned uh, homoerotic uh, men scene will be in this movie, because they seem to have done a lot of Bollywood movies. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not against that, you know what I'm saying, but this movie is uh, kind of, I'm just saying that this movie might be predictable in that realm, so, and also this is a uh, Brahmastra Part 1, so you know, yeah, it's Brahmastra Part 1 colon Shiva, and I'm assuming they probably have the whole God cinematic universe of the Hindu God, so, no disrespect, but, you know, they're trying to make money through making this movie, so it's not like they're above <laughs> anything more than I am. So anyways, moving on. Uh, Life Mark, family drama on par with God's Not Dead movie, but more na nature versus nurture in this kid raised by an adoptive family will now have to deal with his birth mother coming around. However, some shenanigans have prevented this kid from knowing his birth mother for more than 18 years because maybe it was a closed adoption or maybe her his family was uh, uh, gaslighting him. Who knows? Uh, then we got... Hockey Land. Welcome to the fast-paced Minnesota-based film about hockey and being legends in a local small town. Perhaps win or lose, their names will go down in history for being a big fish in a f small frozen pond. Up next, we have True Things. A girl becomes really horny for a guy who makes her come out of her shell of mediocre lifestyle. It's basically an erotica for ladies. Rev up those fryers. No, uh, not... Not porn, mind you, but with, you know, better acting, more shots of fruit baskets and flowers in the foreground. Um, then we have The Bengali, which is a documentary basically about a woman writer who goes into another country to eat, pray, love. That's what you can expect from this documentary. And those are your movies and other stuff that might be going all around, streaming, whatever. Um, there's probably other movies that are streaming, but those are the movies that I saw through IMDb that are coming out this weekend. So... You can enjoy it if you want to, but I'm just saying that, you know, you just, you, you get what you pay for, which is 
yeah, which is a lot for a lot little. Anyways, that concludes my uh, pre-critic. And up next, we have a dub and stuff. This is kind of like a reprisal. This is kind of like a, uh, a fist bump to a comment that I got on my YouTube channel about uh, having more of this movie from the um, Boris Karloff movie from 1940, The Ape. Oh, jeez, with this whole dramatic thing again. Hey, honey, how you doing? Hope you're feeling much better. I like looking at windows. Well, isn't that nice? Well, do you want some coffee, some tea, maybe a crowbar to like, get you out of that chair? Oh, some tea should be wonderful. Please, I'll have a uh, tea with two sugars. All right, I'm busting through. I'm the doctor guy you call to, uh... Hey, how's it going? Oh, wow, talk about a home visit from a doctor. House call. Is this going to cost a lot of money? Oh, well, <laughs> yes, indeed it will cost a lot of money. But you're covered by insurance, right? How's her HMO, by the way? I'm just actually kind of wondering. Well, it's not great. Break it to me, Doc. Ugh. Are you sitting down? Uh... Okay, I gotta tell you something. These unrealistic beauty standards have caused you to be malnourished and not eat your food. And as a result, you are starving and you can barely have the energy to do pretty much uh, yeah, anything, like, at all. So you should probably... <laughs> well, I don't want to look like my mom when I get to her Ooh, age. that's a sick burn. But listen to this. I know it's hard, but you can eat your food and you can work out. One might seem harder than the other, but if you're denying yourself food, it can lead to a thing called death. So, could you try? Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't expect her to just follow the rules. Well, you should have a little more faith. Faith is for Sundays. Now I gotta wheel your skinny butt all over this place. Jeez. Hmm. Oh, jeez. Mm. Thanks, Doc. Hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> Are they gone? Okay, good. Now I can pretend to be a doctor somewhere else. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening this week. Not just the Montana Book Festival, but also uh, things that are just happening this weekend. Um, so let's kick things off. Hold on, let me just uh, bring that website up. MontanaBookFestival.com is where you can find out all the information on what's happening for next week's uh, September 15th through the 18th is when we'll be having the uh, Montana Book Festival. So we'll be basically having it uh, a good chunk of next week. And it's going to be the Missoula Downtown Public Library in downtown Missoula. So uh, I'll get to that after I go through uh, my uh, regular events that are happening this weekend. Before we start events, I wanted to mention that MCAT will be live streaming Homecoming Parade on September 24th, which is a Saturday. And they do plan to start it at 10 a.m. Um, on the 24th. They usually do it at 10 a.m. And just so you guys know, it's going to be an altar parade route. So we're actually going to start in the downtown Missoula area. What? Not in the Missoula area. Hey, they're doing the Higgins Bridge. It's taking quite some time. Get on it. Um, however, be aware that since the Higgins Bridge, a.k.a. Bear, Pop, Bear Print Br Bop, Pop, it will not <laughs> be open. Uh, for, and the starting point, I, I, I'm still calling the Higgins Bridge. I don't care. Um, so <laughs> will not be open and the starting point for the parade will be on the South Street near Sentinel High School. And I'll let you know if that changes, anything updates like that. For the, but for the most part, in the next two weeks, a couple Saturdays from now, uh, we're going to try to live stream it from a connection through Sentinel High School which, I don't know, it, it, it might not happen, but hey, we're going to post it online anyway, so you guys can be able to see it. And so part of this, the route is going to start from Sentinel High School on South Avenue, and they're going to make their way to the university. So they're just kind of like, looked at the map, oh, it's, it was right here, <laughs> put it right there. Okay, and they're going to go to the same destination. But, you know, people don't know, so it's going to probably be talked about more and more and more. Because, you know, ideally they usually start at Pine Street in downtown Missoula by the Red X's, just generally. Just so, uh, you know, they have enough people to uh, get it all set up. But, hey, we'll, we'll see how it all turns out. But that's what, that's what I was told so far, and I'll let you know if anything changes. So, happening this morning as well, also this whole weekend, is the Sheely. Uh, a mountain restoration loop and part of the Great Burn proposed will. Oh, geez. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Explore the Great Burn Proposed Wilderness by signing up for this volunteer backcountry trip. This happens from Friday, September 9th, this morning till, Oct uh, till Monday, September 12th at 2 p.m. The Great Burn Conservation Alliance has been dedicated to preserving the wild uh, characteristics that define the Great Burn for over 50 years. Uh, join for the scenic and adventurous loop in the high country of the Great Burn Proposed Wilderness where they'll be backpacking for four alpine lakes in an effort to reduce human-caused impacts. Tasks will be included gathering and hauling out trash from established sites and reducing impacts and or natural, uh, naturalizing non-essential sites. So it's a, lot, it's a cleanup, but also and also a great backpack trip for a lot of people who are, are looking to get out there. Missoula Food Bank meal distribution. This is important because this is a non-discrimination on economic level for people just wanting to go in there to get some uh, fresh and nutritious food. Their hours are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Wednesdays and Friday, they have abridged hours from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So you can pretty much guarantee around lunchtime you can go to the Missoula Food Bank and get some cheap food and even as far as getting some free food, depending upon they do not ask for identification, proof of income, or proof of being laid off from a job. Then they do not ask if you've been a previous customer of the food bank and they will not turn anyone away. Uh, food is basic human right and everyone and everyone, every, anyone and everyone are welcomed through the doors for the emergency food for you and your family. So that's what's happening and they do it all year long, all those hours, and more. So Tiny Tales and Storytime are today at 1030 here at the Missoula Public Library and that is a great opportunity for kids to learn reading and more. Read with Regime is going to be part of their uh, Tiny Tales version at the Empower Place at the Missoula Food Bank and it starts at the same time at 1030 a.m. every Friday. Um, Yarns is happening with Stitches, Britches, and Crochets. This this weekly event is every Friday at noon on the fourth floor and they're bringing back watercolor on the Cooper Rooms and we'll be with Rob P in the Cooper Room every Friday at noon so you guys can check that out. Uh, Lego Club has also start, uh, started with a new time and they will be starting most afternoons from 2.30 to 5 p.m. here in the public library on the second floor. Uh, then we got James Webb, Webb Telescope event. Spectrum Discovery Center hosts a series of events and science-based activities, but this time their theme has been selected as the James Webb Space Telescope Image Host. On September 9th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., they'll be celebrating the awesome techno technological feat, sharing the amazing images and data in their museum, and there'll be a special astronomy activity happening in the fourth floor as well. This event is free and open to the public. They hope to see you there. Exhibition reception for Currents in Clay. The Clay Student Missoula is doing their first Friday event uh, moving forward for their uh, September exhibition featuring the works of current wildlife ceramic studio resident artists. The uh, work highlights the current in clay, which include a range of functional and sculptural approaches and contemporary ceramics by emerging talents in the field. Wild artist features on the current clay are Raven Cadwell, Lane Chapman, Gabe's Conwell, Conway, Stephanie uh, Dishno, uh, Bruce Kitts, Maya Moan, and Chanel uh, McNa McNamara. So, those are some of the artists and some things happening at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Uh, Worldwide Cinema is going to be at the Missoula Public Library, and they do this most, uh, for, uh, not most, but uh, a lot of uh, second Fridays of each month. And this uh, movie is called Afterlife. It's from Japan. Dr. Brian Doddle will moderate the post film discussion. This program is part of the series Reimagining Death conversations on dying loss and grief in partnerships with UM Humanities Institute. If you have chosen only one member to hold on for eternity, what would it be? And so that's what it's all about. That's the theme. You guys get to watch a movie called Afterlife, and it starts at 6.30 p.m. here at the Public Library. And if you want more information, go to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org. Live music is going to be at the Old Post tonight, starting at 8 p.m. It's going to be the Tesseract. A dueling Pianos with Josh Farmer and Doug Olson will be at Stave and Hoop at 8 p.m. Saturday markets and such are happening all day Saturday from 8 a.m. to about 2 p.m. And this is a great opportunity for people to get some fresh uh, farm to table produce um, directly from the farm people as well. Uh, AS, um, and that's going to be happening uh, from about 2 a.m. to 2, uh, I mean, sorry, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it happens downtown every weekend until the end of October. So you guys get to really enjoy some of that stuff. Apple season's coming out pretty soon, so you guys can enjoy that as soon as the end of September, early October. Ha Apple harvesting will be coming out in the in the fray. Fort Missoula is doing a bunch of things as well. And also, I believe that uh, Big Sky High School is doing a train show on the 18th of September, which I believe is a Saturday. So there's just a lot going on. Oh, actually, no, yeah, I think the 18th is a Sunday. Just, you just double check. I'll tell you for sure next weekend. So um, there's the 16th Annual Peace Festival. 
held at the beautiful gardens of a thousand Buddhas, Georgia's first stellar lineup of interfaith speakers, diverse offerings of international music and dance, food and crafts, and the Tibetan nomadic lifestyle ex ex exhibition including live yaks, an authentic yak hair tent, traditional clothes, and it's all about the 16th annual Peace Festival. I think I was there for like the fifth or fourth, and they had no Buddhas around, and now it's like filled with Buddhas. It's such a beautiful garden. It's a great place to meditate. So yeah, it's the Peace Festival happening uh, in the Th Garden of a Thousand Buddhas just off of Arlie, and also happening this weekend is Hemp Fest, which is gonna be at Little Lola Hot Springs, and this will be the first Hemp Fest in which marijuana has been legalized. So that's happening pretty much from today all the way through Sunday. I believe it's like $15, $20 to get a ticket to go there, and then I think there's some extra cost if you want some camping fees. So it's like a whole festival that's going on there as well. And you get a meet and greet and bump elbows with a lot of uh, dispensaries from various towns across the state. So, yep, that's what's happening there. On Saturday as well at 11 a.m., a fix it clinic in Missoula, home resource community room, bring your ripped or torn clothes, broken household appliances, or wobbly furniture, and, and, and learn how to make them like new again. And the fix it clinic is a great opportunity through uh, home resource community room. And they also work in conjunction with MUD, their tool library, so they can teach you how to fix things. But then you can always go to MUD, uh, which is the Missoula Urban Demonstration Project, and they are all about helping people with tools. They're kind of like MCAT with cameras, but they rent out tools, gardening equipment, uh, lawnmowers, and more for people who are looking to get uh, cheap and easy access to tools. All right, closing art exhibit, Animal Group Show is at Radius Gallery. It's been a hoot living with these soulful and spiritual creatures created by the hands of seven talented artists, but like the summer itself, the multimedia group exhibit is quickly coming to a close, and Radius Gallery will be doing their uh, wrap-up of their Animal Group Show. And uh, MCAT will be uh, continuing our Saturday drop-in. Last weekend was our first Saturday drop-in. This Saturday drop-in is going to be a continuation, and we're also going to be working in conjunction with many other organizations here in the library to encourage science, and it's going to be all about the DNA, building DNA sequences and all that stuff for a theme, and kids will be able to get a passport at various locations here in the library, and uh, if they collect five stamps from five different organizations and stops here at the uh, Missoula Public Library, they will be able to uh, enter for prizes. So it's a fun little stamp rally happening every weekend. Uh, this weekend's theme, I believe, is uh, DNA. So you guys get to check that out. It's happening, uh, and MCAT Saturday drop-in is from 1 to 3 p.m. So that's what's happening there. Saturday Kids Activity Building Beavers, uh, Natural Montana Natural History Center also has their drop-in uh, kids activity from 1 and 3 p.m. for the hands-on activities. September 10th and 24th is Building beavers, many animals build shelters, and beavers are quite the animal architect. Explore the world of beavers and try to build your own beaver dam. D&D Guide f uh, Guild for Teens, Missoula Public Library. This is virtual. If you are stuck at home yearning to satisfy appetite for adventure, great news, the Teen D&D Guild meets online. Missoula Public Library vs. Dungeons & Dragons for Teens, age 12 to 17 beginners are welcome. Limited to eight participants per session. Teen games will be held every other Saturday from 3 to 5 p.m. via Zoom. If you want more information, you can call, contact Brian Doyle at the Missoula Public Library. Um, yep, you just find the link at Missoula Public Library or you can find the link at the MissoulaEvents.net. Um, Hearts of Fire Pottery and Art Studio is doing a Stranger Nights theme for Saturday night at 6 p.m. Stranger Things lovers of all ages come to the Upside Down and get your creepy creativity with Hearts of Fire Pottery Stranger Things night. Be sure to uh, be disturbingly a good time. They will be able to play trivia and give away some great prizes. 80s costumes are encouraged. This is a come and go event, and all the costs are associated with the material, which is about $15. Registration fee, which is part of the project. So, Mud Garden pro Garden Party. I mentioned Mud as the tool library every year uh, around the summer harvest. Mud members, supporters, volunteers, and neighbors gather to acknowledge the good work of this organization and those individuals and families for the benefit f uh, from the inspiration to live a more suitable life. They'll continue the celebration this year with the 31st annual Mud Garden Party with 200 people converging in the tool library and demonstration site for local beverages, food from Adelaide's Latin Food, Tandem Bakery and Cafe, and Bernice's Bakery, Live Music, Wolf and the Moons, raffle items and festivities. So all sorts of fun stuff happening there. If you're interested in doing some uh, music and some live stuff, live music is gonna be Umphreys McGee is gonna be at Kettle's Amphitheater starting at 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. Live music uh, with Blue Moon is gonna get Cranky Sam Public House at 7 p.m. Solid Snake Karaoke is gonna be at Westside Lane's Fun Center at 9 p.m. Salsa 406, Dark Horse Bar at 9 p.m. And finally, Chris Moon is going to be every Saturday at 10 p.m. at the Batlander. And hey, 
Uh, this is very rare, but this happens only three times a year. Uh, this Sunday, we're doing a glass recycling drop-off event at Imagination Brewing Company. There aren't many places to actually recycle glass and end up in the landfill. However, through the work of Recycling Works, they have a nonprofit geared towards this effort, with drop-offs existing for a limited time at various locations. And Imagination Brewing Company, from 9 to 2 p.m., you get to drop off your glass recyclables and get deal with that as well. So that concludes all the events that are happening this weekend. We're going to jump a little bit more about the uh, 2000, uh, let's see here, 2022 Montana Book Festival. So I'm going to jump right into uh, kind of like the event. So it looks like it's going to be going on all weekend long from Thursday through Sunday starting next Thursday. And so uh, if we look at the calendar, I'm going to kind of go over this. So you got your festival opening and reading uh, from Deborah Erling. And that's going to kind of kick us off each of these events happening. And usually they have uh, uh, the last, uh, a lot of great stuff for sure. Um, Oh, man, I can't just get through it all for sure. Fusion of pottery, poetry and photography, workshops with Laura uh, uh, Slater, uh, and then there's Forgotten Characters of History, Gwendolyn and Nick's reading, uh, Lisa Solid reading, uh, Nate, oh, just a bunch of readings for sure from authors and many different uh, books and stuff like that. It's a great way to uh, bump elbows and talk to other authors. And you know, they always have sections on self-publishing about how most uh, publishers are becoming less and less important as people are able to kind of create their own publication and be able to uh, sell their books. I, I've known some people who use uh, websites like, I think it's like Eventbrite or Event Press, and they're able to basically just, uh, write the book and have a template right there so when they do sell it they actually produce their book as is uh, when they sell it rather than just uh, having the book out there to collect dust and then people buy the book so think about it like that it's better on the trees but uh, it's an interesting way of self-publishing so there's an inside tip for any of you who are self-publishing out there that there are websites that build your book for you in which you can just pay outright for the book or you can just have a website set up to sell the book as a host site but unfortunately they always take a percentage so you're going to watch the fine details on that one so montana book festival is an important part and mcat's been on board for covering a lot of the events and i believe we'll be coming to the covering the events thursday through sunday and then we'll wrap up with a, a gala uh, which usually is on sunday nights and they usually try to do that at a bigger venue like the wilma theater if they can get it so enjoy that stuff and more you can go to missoula montana book festival.com for more information so without further ado i want to thank you guys for joining me and for wake up missoula i'm scott ramph